let's explore a place that National Geographic magazine has referred to as the most biologically intense place on Earth, the Osa Peninsula in southern Costa Rica. Stick around till the very end because I'm going to tell you how to pick up a free copy of my 47 page wildlife photography tips ebook to help you prepare for travel and photography in Costa Rica. Hey there, Ralph Velasco of the Continental Drifter where I share simple but powerful tips designed to make your travels easier and more interesting and your photography even better. Do us all a favor and hit that like button right now while you're thinking about it, which really helps the channel a lot, so thanks for that. Links to anything I talk about will be in the description below. All right, let's do this. Remember, drifters, life's too short not to travel. In this video, we'll be exploring what has been called the most biologically intense place on Earth by National Geographic magazine, Costa Rica's Osa Peninsula. According to a recent article in Nat Geo that references this quote, the Osa Peninsula is an isolated promontory surrounded by the Pacific Ocean that is home to 2.5% of the world's biodiversity. Although Costa Rica has just 0.03% of the world's overall land mass, it has 5% of its species, half of which can be found only in the Osa Peninsula. Located in the southwestern part of the country, in the Punta Arenas province, with the Pacific Ocean to the west and the Golfo Dulce to the east, the Osa Peninsula is situated very close to the Panamanian border. Puerto Jimenez, located on the Golfo Dulce, or Sweet Gulf, is the main town on the peninsula, with a population of around 8,000 people, and it has its own airstrip that we fly in and out of. The flight from the capital city of San Jose, located right smack in the center of the country, is one of the most beautiful flights I've ever taken, with a total airtime of just 45 minutes. There's super fast and easy check-in and quick baggage drop-off and pick-up on both ends, which makes it super convenient. The hotel we stay at is just five minutes from PGM Airport and it's a wonderful family-owned property. There wouldn't be enough time in this video to tell you about all the experiences we have on this trip, so I'm just going to highlight the best of the best. We'll take a boat ride on the nearby Sierpe River where I've seen incredible amounts of wildlife, including crocodiles, water birds, snakes, bats, lizards, and more. We'll also take an adventure that's come to be called the Monkey Tour, a once in a lifetime drive from Puerto Jimenez along the eastern edge of the Osa Peninsula to Matapalo Beach, where I've seen some of the most beautiful waves and gorgeous sunsets anywhere. Finally, we'll walk the grounds of our hotel itself to see what kinds of wildlife we can observe, hear, and maybe even photograph at night. Not too far away from the property where we stay, we can access the Sierpe River, which is located within the Terraba Sierpe National Wetlands. And it's no surprise that this is a place just chock full of wildlife. There's no better way to see this area's abundance of flora and fauna than to casually float up and down the river on a comfortable boat, complete with snacks and drinks. And more importantly, 360 degree views of the mangroves teeming with life. Yeah, we're definitely not roughing it. Crocodiles sun themselves on the muddy shore, patiently waiting for their next meal. Dennis, our local guide and unofficial wildlife whisperer, constantly points out the many creatures that cleverly blend in with their surroundings and that we'd probably never see without his eagle eye. There are families of bats sleeping on tree limbs awaiting nightfall. Snakes curled up in trees. Jesus lizards blending in on the shore and in mangrove branches and more. 
Extended families of white-faced monkeys and squirrel monkeys play and forage in the trees overhead and in the huge bushes of bamboo that line the shore, stopping once in a while out of mutual curiosity and to give us the occasional pose. The sheer variety of birds will amaze you, especially when you realize that more than 350 species of birds call the relatively small Osa Peninsula home. This is especially incredible when you think about the fact that that's more than the entire countries of France, Greece, Morocco, or Azerbaijan, concentrated right here. This is such a wonderful way to experience this place and literally be right in the middle of these beautiful animals on their turf. Certainly life goes on in these places and you'll often see local families out for a leisurely boat ride and or fishermen angling for dinner. What's come to be called the Monkey Tour is a once in a lifetime 18 kilometer drive from Puerto Jimenez along the eastern edge of the Osa Peninsula. Here you can hardly go a few hundred meters without seeing some new and interesting form of wildlife. There are all sorts of exotic birds, including small families of owls barely visible in a tree. Toucans and scarlet macaws munch on what the local trees provide and can often be seen and heard flying overhead. Some of the most interesting animals are the sloths that Dennis will often see from incredibly far away while driving. And then he'll stop and spend several minutes trying to point them out to us before we can focus in on these incredibly elusive and slow moving tree dwellers. This is a photo of a two-toed sloth at least 50 meters off the side of the road that Dennis saw and we got out to photograph. Every visitor to the Osa Peninsula has the goal of hitting a grand slam and a double header. And I'm not referring to baseball. What I mean is that if you're lucky enough to see all four monkey species and both the two-toed and three-toed sloth in the same week, you can claim to have hit a grand slam and a double header. From what I understand, this is a sort of game made up by the locals, but it's a great goal to have. Well, I was able to accomplish all of this in just about three hours on my first time doing the monkey tour. Just so you know, the four monkey species you'll encounter in this part of Costa Rica are howler monkeys, white-faced monkeys, squirrel monkeys, and spider monkeys. To me, the most interesting are the howler monkeys. They're really not that big, with the adults perhaps as big as a medium-sized dog, but their voices carry throughout the forest canopy, and often, while you're lying in bed, you'll hear them roaring, yes, roaring, early in the morning. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any usable audio of the howler monkeys in Costa Rica, but a few years back, I was in Chiapas, Mexico, on the border with Guatemala, shooting for a cookbook on Mexican cuisine. And me and my colleagues were the only people at the abandoned Mayan ruins known as Yachitlan. When we arrived, there was the most austere and all-encompassing roar that I could hear and feel all around me. But I had no idea what was creating this noise. Our guide told me it was the local howler monkeys, but there I couldn't see any at all, nowhere. And so all I could hear was this long and deep roar that reminded me of what the dinosaurs must have sounded like, as I'd never heard a howler monkey before in my life. Isn't that just incredible? Our ultimate goal on the monkey tour is beautifully remote Matapalo Beach, where I've seen some of the most perfect waves and gorgeous sunsets anywhere. The resort arranges a huge cooler full of soft drinks, water, beer, and snacks, and there's no place better to tuck in than on the mostly abandoned beach at Matapalo. This is a great place to try to get some slow motion video of the waves crashing and the local kids playing. After we've had enough at the beach, we'll drive back to Puerto Jimenez on the same road and make one final stop at Martina's for a WC break and perhaps another cold beer or two. As a matter of fact, Martina's is where we stopped and had a perfect opportunity to photograph this three-toed sloth in a nearby tree while sipping a cold beer. 
He was extremely cooperative and stayed mostly out in the open for me to capture in all kinds of positions as he maneuvered his way very slowly among the branches. Finally, one of my absolute favorite things to do the whole time I'm in Costa Rica is to simply walk at night on the grounds of the hotel where we stay. This beautiful property is made up of 44 acres and it butts right up against the Golfo Dulce and it's mostly jungle. Dennis has taken me out several times to see all of the interesting nocturnal creatures that appear after dark. During this walk, we'll see a variety of insects, lizards, spiders, and the cutest red-eyed tree frogs and other species of frogs you'll ever want to see. I tell all my guests to bring their own flashlights for walking and to see where they're going, but the resort also provides professional lights for photography. Check out this series of frog shots I made, mostly with my iPhone. It's amazing the quality shots you can get with a simple smartphone as long as you have enough light. Now check out the behind the scenes of what was really going on there. These frogs are tiny and it's absolutely pitch black out so we have to use artificial light in order to see and photograph them. Something else I love to do during these night walks is to find a safe place to stand and then turn off all the lights and just listen to the sounds of the jungle like this. If you enjoy getting incredibly close to wildlife in its natural habitat, along with wide open spaces, expansive and empty beaches, friendly people, great food and more, then you need to visit the Osa Peninsula. Click the link in the description for more information on my Costa Rica Explorer Tour if you'd like to go with me. I'm told that because of the drop in tourism due to travel restrictions throughout this area, the wildlife is incredibly abundant and more active than ever, so this year's trip should be even more fun. Also, as promised, if you'd like to pick up a free copy of my 47-page Wildlife Photography Tips ebook to help you prepare for travel and photography in Costa Rica, then simply follow the link in the description below. Question of the day, have you been to Costa Rica? If so, have you been to the Osa Peninsula? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget, you can look forward to a new video from me each and every Friday at 1 p.m. Central Time. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video about Costa Rica's Osa Peninsula. And if you did, please share it with other great travelers like yourself. And do let me know in the comments if you want to see more like it and give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you don't miss an episode. Next, head on over to the continentaldrifter.co website for more interesting travel and photography tips and to get my latest download. And remember, drifters, life's too short not to travel.